Okay, um, I'm going to tell my testimony. Um, I got three points I'm going to hit, and then I'm out to head. Where I was, I surrendered, and where I'm headed. From the age of 12 to 22, I was in and out of trouble. As a kid, it was due to being bullied because I came from a broken home. My mom was our only source of income, so I never had the best of clothes, and my sister was legally blind. So that made us an easy target. My sister was good at tuning things out. You know, she turned the books. As for me, it wasn't a happy ending. I began to get angry as a child, letting rage consume me, fighting kids for me and my sister, and throwing desks in class. That then led to stealing and more rebellion with weapons, winding myself straight in juvenile, where I was even more alone, which made me more violent. I got out of boys' school at 17 and ended up catching a gun case at 18. Went straight to prison because of my juvenile record. Ended up getting worse in prison because I was so angry. Got out, started selling weed. Got pulled over while on probation would send me straight back to prison. Got out a second time looking to make a change. Y'all know how that is. <laughs> when I got released, I went and stayed with my mom. She gave me four weeks to find a job, or I had to find somewhere else to stay. She meant well, and I was on probation, so I needed to get it done anyway. So I started looking every morning, but no luck, for three weeks. So due to the struggles, I even had thoughts of suicide. So on the third week, I got so discouraged, I asked a buddy of mine if he could get a front on some crack cocaine so I could start hustling again to make everybody, make everybody see that I wasn't a mess up. I went and sold uh, 50 piece. I had 2.5 grams left. I met with my uh, wife Molly at the time. She was my girlfriend. So I went and met with her, walked her home. And as I was walking back and I was by the YMCA, a policeman just happened to look my way. I didn't think nothing of it. I wasn't doing anything wrong. Um, walked past the Herald Bulletin and he pulled in there. He got out the car and he was like, what's your name, son? I said, Wade. He said, uh, well, do you have ID on? I was only out three weeks, so the only ID I had was a prison ID. So that led to more questions. <laughs> so he said, what were you in prison for? I said, I sold some weed, son. He said, oh, okay, don't worry about it. I'll just do uh, a random search on you and let you go. Yeah, he found that on me. 2.5 grams. Um, in the state of Indiana, that would be considered a D felony. Uh, now they got this new system with numbers, but then it was a D felony. Um, so I was looking to face about five years, so I thought. Um, they pulled me out the drunk tape, and uh, they said, Wade Jackson. Uh, possession of cocaine, D felony. I said, what, D felony? No, it's under three grand, I know the system. He said, no, you were by a public park that enhances it up to a B felony. So I was facing 22 years. So I was in a holding cell for a few hours. It took me straight upstairs to a regular a uh, single holding cell, and there was a guy by the name of Maceo who came to my cell.
And whatever happens, happens. So I started getting into the word, studying him and building a relationship with him. Because that's what he wanted. Preaching and teaching in his name. He even used me to heal a guy's legs. When, we, when he was having trouble walking, me and another guy prayed over his legs. After we prayed over his legs, he was, he was still struggling to get up. So, Maceo was like, you know, once we pray, he's healed, he's good. I heard a small whisper tell me he doesn't believe. So I looked at him, I said, do you believe he said, yeah, 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 I believe. I said, no, you don't. No, you don't. I'm sorry. The Spirit of the Lord right now is telling me that you don't believe. Right. And as I was saying that, God was giving me a vision in my head because he gives us instructions on how to physically do things. All right. Yes. All right. So he told Mason to grab one leg, go up and down it. He told me to go up and down the other one, but he told me to pray. We prayed an instant. His legs was healed. He got it. 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 Uh, I'm the best, or I'm the greatest. He does it for His glory. Yeah. I was just an yeah. instrument who chose to be willing, and He used me. Amen. 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 Right. Amen. So then here we come. We go into my case, my blessing, my deliverance. <laughs> I ended up going to court. A prosecutor wrote on a piece of paper. He wanted to change my B to a D. Uh, give me two to one locked up, mm -hmm. give me three years probation. So he dropped 22 years down to five years. Mm -hmm. I thought that was an amazing blessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went to my cell, and I went to thank God. Because, you know, once he does something awesome for you, we should thank him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I went to thank him, and I heard that voice again, the same one when, uh, when he used me to heal a man. He said, So I flipped to that. It says, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yeah. So, yeah. so much God was trying to show me how much he's in control. Yeah. So, um, we think sometimes that there's so much, you know, oh, God wants me to be hurt like this for a reason. No, dig deeper. Mm -hmm. Find out yeah. what you're trying to yeah. 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 I had two weeks, I had two weeks until my plea started. I was leading a Bible study, and on this particular day, we, we used a daily devotion. Because, you know, uh, God can, will speak to you through anything that's centered yeah. around you. Yeah. I mean, come on now. At times, yeah. when he comes yeah. and gets us, he comes and gets us from deep, dark places. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Of course, yeah. it's where any, any of his word is going to speak through. Yeah. Yeah. What he told the people, when I read this daily devotion and boy, it still gives me goosebumps to this day. Mm -hmm. says, your Elijah will be leaving us now. <laughs> But don't forget everything you have been taught. Immediately after that was said on the loudspeaker, it said, Jackson, pack your things, you're going to end triple C. Mm -hmm. So that led me and showed me to believe as well that when you're doing the work of God, He'll let you know when it's time to go. Yes. Be felony. I wasn't supposed to be go to end triple C. But he said, your work here is done, sir. Go here now. I went to NCCC, had a few messages for God for a few people. Some listened, some didn't. Uh, you know, a lot of times we think when, when he moves us, 
us. He's just going to move us to uh, an awesome place that we love. But no, it's for Him. We are who we want to talk to. Right. Right. He already right. delivered you and, and got you following Him. Now it's time for you to do His work. Yes. Right. Right. So it hurt me sometimes for some who didn't take the word. You know, they got uh, punishments that I knew. They could be delivered from what we have to be willing. We have to listen. The ones who did listen, oh my God, amazing lessons have Okay, so I had a day before I was supposed to go to court. I was kind of nervous because, you know, uh, God had stepped back a little bit. I wasn't hearing him as much, so. I'm uh, trying to figure out uh, where to the defendant, anybody who's been in trouble or been in trouble broke, we call them public pretenders. <laughs> but this time God was with me. That public defender got up. Argue my case like a regular lawyer. Don't you change clothes every day, sir? If he was walking, why would uh, you said you stopped him because he looked like a suspect who stole a bike from the VP? He's walking? No. The whole case had to get dismissed mm -hmm. because they proved that the police did one thing wrong. All right. I was instantly released that day. All right. <laughs> yeah. couple verses for you guys, a couple points, and we out of here. Psalm 1611. You will show me the path of life, and your presence is fullness and joy. Yes. At your right hands are pleasures forevermore. Yes. Yes. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. Yes. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, yes. and leave not on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Yes. yes. God can help you change mm -hmm. without changing your circumstances. Yes. 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 Second point. I'd like to apologize to the church. I'm ashamed of what I have allowed myself to become. Yes. When I left this place, if I'm a Christian, and I am, I'm supposed to be Christ-like as possible. Mm -hmm. I just got lost along the way, and I'm sorry for that. Mm -hmm. I just ask that, I just ask for your forgiveness and guidance as I pick myself back up. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, a lot of times uh, we can become very bitter and angry. And that's what had happened to me. You know, I walked away from my father. I walked away from the church. I walked away from everybody. Because I was just so bitter and angry. Um, I just felt like uh, people weren't there for me. But that's because I took my eyes off God. Yes. I focused on what's around me. We have to remember who's in control of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Last but not least, where am I headed? Now you guys will hear how I made it here now. <laughs> to do nothing else but the work of God because this is my purpose. The day Pastor Foggs came to minister to, minister to us, yeah. a saint by the name of Jesse Wilkerson, I got a message from God. Mm -hmm. He told my wife to come back and get me from the house, mm -hmm. and that God had a message for me. Mm -hmm. Immediately that day, God released uh, me and my wife from the bondage, from the bondage of sin that we had put ourselves in. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people don't know that um, it's our selfish desires, but the devil sets up traps for us to fall into. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. So I got back into uh, selling drugs. They mm -hmm. weren't a uh, one crack cocaine. Never no. had. <laughs> um, but I got to selling drugs again. 
Yes. They went from me making money to me working for the dealer. Yes. And then me caught in a gerbil's field wheel and I didn't know how I was working out. Mm -hmm. When the voice of God spoke, I got up and prayed. Yeah. Yeah. 